Hey everyone, it's Bradley again. Happy Monday. Uh, I can't believe that we're in Holy Week already. And for today's home reflection, I just thought we'd uh, do a little multi-part reflecting on the Last Supper and what it takes to, you know, have a meal with people that you care about. And I was thinking about whenever my wife and I have people over to our home, whenever we invite people into our personal private space and uh, to share that really intimate experience that is eating with someone else. Um, you know, I thought about all the things that go into it. You know, before we have company over, we usually deep clean the carpets and all. I love, I love to wash the dishes. I don't know why, I'm a weirdo. I just zone out and just scrub, 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 do it, do it, do it. Um, and we do all these different things so that when people come over, they can be comfortable and they can feel welcomed just by all the preparations that we've done. And we do that because we care about people, because we want them to be a part of our lives and we want them to share, um, you know, just in what we've prepared for them. We want them to share in our lives with each other. And it's those simple acts of preparation that, that mean a lot and go a lot of the way towards communicating how much we care about the people that we invite in. I wanna look at the beginning of the story of the Last Supper, which we're leading up to on Thursday of this week. This is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So he starts the Last Supper out like this. He starts it with these words, I've eagerly desired to eat this meal with you, which can seem kind of weird because we know this is the last meal he's gonna have before he goes and dies for us. So you'd think he'd be a little apprehensive. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd be looking at my last meal and being that excited to have gotten to my last meal, but Jesus is excited because if you really think about it, this is what his entire life has been leading up to. The stories of the gospels, I had a, a teacher at the seminary tell me one time, they're extended prologues for the passion. You know, the whole mission of Jesus culminates in Good Friday when he dies for us and Easter Sunday, ultimately when he rises for us again and invites us into new life. And so for Jesus, he'd prepared, he'd gotten ready, he'd gotten everything in order. From the moment he was incarnated, um, from the moment he came to this earth, he was on that mission. He was already suffering for us. You know, imagine how much it, it must have cost him just to empty himself and to humble himself and come down here and be with us. And he was finally nearing the end of a race well run. Um, an end in a sense, you know, we of course know that it's not really ultimately the end. Um, but I think that's where the excitement and where the joy that he was experiencing when he says, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you to his, who, to his apostles, those that have followed him. I think that's where that comes from. He'd gotten everything ready. He'd done what he needed to do to prepare himself, them, in a sense, he'd set the table, and all that was really left to do was to enjoy the feast. And so I'm going to leave it there, a little cliffhanger for today. I'll join you again on Wednesday, and uh, we're going to talk next about um, inviting the right people um, into our celebration and uh, who Jesus invites into this celebration of the wedding feast with his bride. So uh, God bless you. I hope you're having a great start to your Holy Week. And I look forward to seeing you soon.